my name's Cheese, and welcome to another Fossil Sweeper Progress Update video. If you haven't heard of the project before, you can find an overview here, but the TLDR is it's like Minesweeper, but you're digging up fossils, and you get to build skeletons out of the stuff you find. For the past month or so, I've been continuing to work on museum placement mechanics. I've done an implementation for the museum music, I've created a placeholder example museum, and I've made a couple of dig abilities. I had a test to ask if there is a way that they could clear all existing flags, and while I hadn't planned to add that as a feature, implementing it as a dig ability let me flesh out some of the functionality in the ability system that I did have planned, including a selection strategy for all tiles, with options to target empty tiles, or both empty and fossil tiles. After that was in and behaving, I added a more interesting ability that automatically excavates all empty tiles with the highest number of adjacent fossils. I think I'll need to limit this one to one use per dig site or something like that, but for now, I'm really enjoying the way that this reveals things differently from how playing normally or using the placeholder find fossil ability does. It feels like it makes me play a little differently and that's part of the role that I want the dig abilities to have. Since the last video, I've decoupled the editing camera from avatar movement in the temp museum. I've also added some snapping behaviors that snap to an overhead view when picking up floor-mounted items. I still need to do more work in order to make this feel cohesive. Having the camera move after you've positioned it nicely isn't that much fun. But these are still important features, and once I have placement mechanics for wall and ceiling mounted items functional, I'll be able to look at pulling it all together nicely. On that note, I started experimenting with some approaches to wall and ceiling placement. I'm bumbling around a little, in part because 3D maths isn't my strong suit. A uh, big thanks to Vfig for some advice along the way, but mostly because I'm still deciding whether or not I want to express museum item movement as surface relative, where a player could move an item around on a wall that is out of view behind a corner, or whether I want to express it as camera relative, where the camera would need to be rotated to move an item to that same position without it jumping to the wall in the foreground. Both options have pros and cons, and though I suspect that I'm likely to end up landing on the latter, I still want to sit with it for a little while before deciding. While discussing the project's remaining music with Peter at the beginning of September, we realised that we had a version of the museum track separated into a bunch of different layers that hadn't been put into the game, so I got to work on doing a quick implementation that allows players to choose which bits of music play in any given room. To help give a better impression of how much variation we could squeeze out of different combinations, I put together a quick and dirty example museum with 12 rooms, and gave each its own lighting, and populated them with a whole bunch of specimens, it's mainly duplicates of the existing placeholder fossils, and a bunch of stuff I pulled in from the prototype, whatever I had lying around. With six different layers, I was able to get unique combinations for each room, but it was a bit of a stretch. At this point, we're feeling confident in the approach though, and Peter's going to work on adding a few more layers to help expand the options available. Putting together the example museum also led to a bunch of extra little improvements for the museum phase. And that stuff is still very work in progress, but it was good to get some perspective from using it with a focused goal in mind. To speed things along, I added a debug shortcut that duplicates selected items, and I feel like something like this would be a nice feature to expose to players so that they can duplicate their displays if they have enough stuff in their inventory. I also updated mouse controls so that players can click on a door they're already running to in order to just jump straight to that next room without waiting for the walk animation to finish. I implemented some temporary UI for assigning room names, and added some text at the bottom of the screen that indicates what's under the cursor when mousing over specimens, doors, and so on. It's now marginally more interesting to look around a populated museum room. I also updated my saving and loading code to be able to handle saves that are bundled with the game, so that I can ship specific test cases to testers. Drawing inspiration from games like X-Wing and TIE Fighter, I've been thinking that I might include a couple of example museums with the release version of the game, so that players who want to see what sort of content the game has without spending a lot of playtime can have a way of doing so. A very big thank you to the supporters going by on screen at the moment. Their supporters help me eat while making this game, and I am so very appreciative. A huge thanks also to Screen Tasmania, who supported this project with a small grant. 
Anyway, that's about it for today. If you'd like to keep track of development or try the playable prototype, there are some links in the description. And if you're super keen to check out the stuff that we've talked about here today, I make early test builds available to my supporters on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and goodbye!